Welcome to ADOS Aiming by Jack Short. Today we have a Ford pickup truck, Super Duty Ford pickup truck, one out of a million out there on the road. But this one, we have a mystery. Mirror. This has the extended mirror, fold-in mirror, door module on each door. And this one is a mystery because the extended mirror works fine. It goes in and out. And the extended mirror switch does both of them, but it's not part of the network. It doesn't communicate. It's direct wire. The rest of the switch talks on the network. Like this switch will talk to the module, but it's not folding the mirror in and out. I took the carpeting out. I inspected everything because this vehicle was at the Ford dealership. They said they repaired this, that, the other. Then they decided that this water had water damage, salt water damage, and corroded wires. I didn't see any corroded wires, but I just took it apart. So turning the key on, everything looks normal. The mirror switch works up, down. The window switch works, but this button that folds it in doesn't work. You can select left, right, and you can move the mirror left, down, right, all that works. And the same thing on the other side. Now, this window switch works with a LIN, L-I-N, local network, to that module in the door. And then the network talks to the other side through the data bus on the passenger door. As you can see, the mirror is going up and out. So I know the communication lines between the module and between the mirror and the module are working. The windows are working up and down. So this is a bit of a mystery because why this one function to fold the mirrors in and out doesn't work. Now, this customer sways up and down. It used to work before the repair, whatever the repair was. They sent it to the Ford dealer and they got nothing. Here's the diagram of the passenger door. So this little M represents the motor for the fold-in mirror, and it goes directly to the module. So all that BS that the wires are cut from one to the next and it was corrosion makes no sense because the module talks directly to the mirror and all other functions work on the mirror. So I decided, let me test it. So, sure enough, the wires are exactly the colors as the diagram. We got a yellow with orange and a brown. And that wire goes directly into the module on the passenger door. So, I'm going to do a quick test just to make sure that the actual motor in the mirror, I don't have any histories. Maybe somebody changed the mirror. So, number nine is the white with the yellow, and number 18 is the brown. So, this connector is very clearly marked. So I'm going to put in some very thin pins to make sure I don't spread it out. I don't damage anything. And I'm going to do a check on the motor in the mirror itself. Maybe somebody installed an aftermarket mirror. Maybe the motor is burnt out. Maybe if one motor is burnt out, it won't move the other one. I really don't know. I already did this test on the driver's side. But I don't want to make this video longer than I need to, so I'm just going to show the part of the passenger. And it says 4 ohms, 3.94 ohms. And the driver's side was close to it, was around 7 ohms. So anytime you have a DC motor, you're going to have almost a short. So I decided that let me test the motor itself. So I hooked up this power pack, and I'm applying positive and negative and by switching these terminals I should be able to move the motor in and out the mirror should fold in and out now I would recommend to put a fuse in line just in case it's shorted but I decided I was so confident that I got the right terminals and sure enough it moves in and out so all I confirm in this test is that the motor in the mirror works and it's wired in correctly and the door module wiring is good there's no interruptions because I could do it right out of there so why is this mirror not moving in and out by touching the button on the master switch and the driver's door 
So I'm going to have to go some further. So I decided, let me plug in and do a diagnostic check. I'm using the IDS Ford, but of course you can use an Altel or any other snap-on scanner. And I'm going to go into the driver's door module. And I'm going to do a quick check and nothing. Pass. No codes. No codes. Well, I got. let me try the data logger. On the data logger, depending what module you go into, a lot of times you could just view live action as you push it. Maybe they have the fold-in mirror in and out so I could see. But as soon as I open this module, I could see there's very limited information. If you go into engine control or a transmission or ABS, you get a lot more information. But on these body control modules, the engineers don't put a whole lot. So I'm just going to select everything just to take a look. And maybe this will give me some kind of clue why the folded mirror. So I can see the voltage is good. And I can see the mirror switch left, right, fold in, out. I can see the safety. There's a lot of information, but nothing what I'm looking for for the mirror fold in. So this looks like it's going to be a dead end. But just to overview, when you highlight one of these things, like you see that black line, you can hit on the exclamation point, and it's going to give you a little more detail of what you're looking at. Left mirror select switch, and those are the two options that you're going to see in the live data, inactive or active. So it just basically tells you. And on the, right, on the left side, you can see all the other perimeters that you can look at, and you can see there's nothing on the fold-in mirror. But just to play around with it, as I'm pressing the window switch, different buttons on it, I can see that it's reacting. So all that that is confirming, see like child safety, LED, on, off. All it does is confirming to me that the window switch actually talks to the module and the module talks to the rest of the car. But it doesn't really help me figure out why it's not working. So when I press it, any button, it says active. If I press the mirror up and down, that will switch left, right, down, up. So it's telling me which position the mirror is moving, but there's nothing. Now, I just tried to press the fold-in button. It says active, so it realizes that I'm pressing it. But if I press the fold-in mirror on the cell, let me see what happens. So that's the fold-in button. Am I getting any reaction at all? So when I look at it, it says active. So it goes to active. It realizes that I'm pressing a button, but on the mirror cell, it says invalid. Like it doesn't know what to translate this activity. Like almost like that button is not programmed into the module to do anything because it says invalid. So I'm going to highlight this section and I'm going to hit the explanation to see what that really represents. So I'm looking at this. It says up, down, left, right, or idle, or invalid. So this perimeter, oh, that's me. Give me a thumbs up. If you like these technical videos, please subscribe. Thank you. So that indicate only tells talks about the mirror itself. So I got no options. So I'll decide, let me program it. Because when the vehicle came to me, it actually had another door module already in the car that somebody changed, and it already had a, another window switch that somebody already tried to replace. So maybe they just didn't program it. I don't know the history. So I'm just going to confirm that I got the right VIN, install new module. I'm going to act like as if this module was new, and I go through the whole process of programming and configuring this module as if it was new. It goes to the internet, it grabs the software, puts it in, complete, and let me try it. Now, push the button, nothing, nothing. I'm really running out of options. I don't know why this mirror doesn't work. I just programmed it according to the VIN, and it grabbed the software, and it programmed it in nothing. Well, I got one more option left, as build. As build data is used to reconfigure a module. I'm thinking maybe that module came from another car that didn't have the feature of the fold in and out. When you do an automatic configuration, it updates the software you already have. Let me start from scratch. Let me reconfigure it. 
So I'm going to do the as build data and actually type it in manually because I'm running out of options. Why this folding? So I'm going to hit no, I don't want automatic. I want manual. And I'm going to type in each and every perimeter. Over here, it tells me to go to Ford Motor Car Dealer.com. But since I am not working at a dealership, I do not have access to Oasis. So I'm going to show you in a few seconds how you get this information. But what's noted here is 740. It right away tells me the address, what to start putting in manually into this door module to reconfigure it. And where I get this information is right here. As you can see, each module in this car has a specific address. And then it tells you who lives in that address, how many tenants are in that thing. And each line is a different tenant, is the way I look at it. 740 is the door module, but look how much, how many tenants, look how many 14, 15, 16, 17, all the way down to 20. Normally I take a picture with my cell phone, but this looks like it's way too much. So I'm just going to print it. It just makes it easier. Where do I get it? Right here. Motorcraftservice.com. One word. And when you get to this page, you select your country and your language, and you go to free resources. Everybody likes stuff for free. And over here, we're going to go to quick guide. As much as you like free, you like something that's quick and free. And over here, Ford gives you a lot of information about their vehicles, which is really worthwhile to study. But for this task, we're going to scroll all the way down until we find as built data module build data and this is designed if you put if your car was struck by lightning and you replaced every computer in a car you can rebuild all the original data just by entering the VIN but make sure you put the correct VIN so by doing this I'm gonna rewrite the actual thing now it makes you put in the security thing and it says right here, lowercase, uppercase is not. This is just made to make sure that you're not a bot, you're not an automated system, um, hoarding all this information and tying up the uh, server. So they make you type in this thing. Tear tag is very important. If you ever replaced an engine computer or you can't communicate with a car, that tear tag is going to tell the IDS what car you're working on. And there you can see all of these address, 7A7. Now, if you, you're not familiar with this, you don't know what 7A7. Is it an engine computer? Is it a transmission computer? Is it an ABS? Is it a fuel pump module? Is it a door module, a body control module? It, it could be any module on this car. And look how long this list is. And this is an actual truck, not even a luxury car, but look how many modules. But what I'm really after is 740, because as soon as I went into as Build data, so I printed it all out, and I'm going to copy all that information. I don't have to put in the address, but I just have to type in the numbers and letters afterward. And this fills in into the module. It fills in all of the data, and it tells this door module what type of vehicle it's in and what options need to be worked on what options this module has so it's going to know it for instance and then we go to the next seven so now we go to 0102 and we keep typing it in now apparently we, we have over 20 lines so i'm not going to i'm just going to fast forward but that's the idea and once you rewrite this if this vehicle really came with fold-in mirrors because i'm suspecting maybe somebody just put all this stuff in so after you do that, it says configuration. Can we find it in the dumpster? Please wait, and it's reconfiguring the module with the exact as built data that I just entered. Turn the key off, it goes through the whole process. And now, this is like the end. I'm just going to see if this works. And I press the button, voila. It actually works. It actually opens and closes. So that means that for whatever reason, the module they put in came from the wrong car. And it was, oh, that's me giggling, that I can't believe it actually worked. And the local Ford dealership had this vehicle for like three weeks. 
Thank you for watching ADOS Aiming by Jack Short. If you enjoyed the videos, give me a thumbs up.